Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. Right. He's a big jumper. Yeah, if he was all jumping. I but guess he'd Superman be... can leap over a tall building. But Spider-Man would be Peter Parkour if, <laughs> if he was a, just a jumper. Ah, you win. If he was a jumper. Amazing. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast and every week we take in an English saying, an idiom, a phrase, and we Hi. dive into its origins, its usage, its history. Otherwise, we just use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation. I'm totally tongue-tied. That's Man. it. After, after 203, a, you know, it is what it is. This is not a good... You think you'd have it memorized. This is not a good <laughs> beginning. It, like, we need a better place to start. Uh, you know, sometimes... Well, you just... Whatever... Better is, place to start than the beginning. It, where should you start? I guess it's like the Bible. You don't have to start necessarily at the beginning. In fact, it can be more confusing. What do you mean you don't have to start at the beginning? It, the Bible literally the f- starts with in the beginning. Well, I, me- I remember it was uh, being introduced like, hey, have you ever read this uh, this book? <laughs> it's like, no. And of course, you start at the beginning because, you know, that's where you start in books. It's a very good place to start. But it, 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 it's like all the history books are up front. I see. And so if you're like trying to jump into like... So kind of trying to have a life-changing moment. You don't start necessarily you know, at the beginning. Yeah. Because then you got to work your way through like some 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 pretty hefty content. Yeah. Where you're like, there's a lot of bagats and history. <laughs> and this is so-and-so's son. Slay, who was so-and-so's and... son. Who was so-and-so's son. And there was 12,400 of these people. And this is so-and-so's son. And it's not a good place to start. And then all of those sons... Handed in their foreskins for <laughs> the end. The end. And then they made calamari. Okay. Well, you know, I would have liked to have started at the beginning. It's a, it just seems like the perfect place to start. You know, like. <laughs> yes. As a jumping off point. Yes. Jumping off point. Jumping off point. Today's idiom is jumping off point. Weirdly, when I went to find uh, clips for famous people or TV shows using jumping off point, three of them right off the bat were from. Okay. Well, the name was just a jumping off point. From Schitt's Creek. Hmm. It was weird. Like wh- The script is nothing more than a jumping off point. <laughs> like, why all from the same show? It's so Maybe they're trying to capture on that phrase. I Who think knows? we just discovered that uh, one of the writers has, you know how we all have idiosyncrasies, things we say too much. Somebody on their writing staff is always saying that's their that's line. A good jumping off point. That's good. Yeah. Uh, when you start researching it, it's not good again. Uh, there's uh, a <laughs> there's a lot of uh, bridges involved and it, death. Well, let's get right into the or- let's do something different. Let's get into it. Let's not waste time like we usually do. Sure. People are like because there's probably some extensive origin stuff that we're gonna have to really dig into and find uh, the meat in. So. Okay. Before we get into origins, I'm gonna give you three choices of where it might have come okay. from. Is it one from paratroopers? Two from Hobo lingo. That was hard to say. Hobo lingo. Or is it three topography? You think about that. Here we go. It's a speed run. <laughs> Is, is, and let's uh, move it's obvious on. I'm rushing. I either have somewhere to go on. or there's that much content to talk about. People are racing down the road. They're gonna, Maybe I'm I'm going so fast that they're it's, not helping, get in the, whole it's helping the guy on the treadmill. It's like, am I running fast? This podcast is brought to you in 192 beats per minute. <laughs> so your three choices were, does uh, the idiom jumping off point come from paratroopers? Is it hobo lingo? Um, I, I w- like the ho- reason I hesitated. I liked hobo lingo as in like a train. I'm guessing you're saying right. That's okay. what I was nodding at. Yeah. Okay. I and mean, or it? that's what it's really from. <laughs> and that's and then the third one topography. is topography. Topography. I'm gonna go topography. All right. Well, in the 19th century, jump off was used uh, at least in the U.S. the same way that drop off is used now. Like not as in I'm gonna drop my kids off at school, but as in you're walking along and there's a drop off. So you could be wading out into the water and you're like, don't go too much further because there's a drop off. So right. in, in the 1800s, uh, drop off wasn't used as much, but jump, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, jump off was. But there is a difference between the two. So a drop off, like I just said, might be out in the water, whereas a jump off was used in a situation where you literally might have to jump off. So if you're, uh, let's say you're you're marching down a pathway and there's been an earthquake previous to you being there and mm-hmm. you're not in the middle of an earthquake and there's just like, whoa, there's a 10 foot drop here. Uh, and the only way to continue on would be to jump off. Then that would be a jump off. 
that we would probably more often say now, oh, there's like, gotta be careful, there's a drop off. It's a, like a slight linguistic variation, which makes me think of like, uh, uh, you know, when when someone's like, if you don't do this, then I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump off this 300 foot cliff. And you're like, I think that's a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, that was great. That was great. I did not see that coming. <laughs> Neither did the person that fell off. I guess. Uh, yeah, of, of which there is a distinction between a bluff and a cliff. A bluff is an uh, is uh, made of a substance that is, is an eroding substance, whereas I think a, um, a cliff is more rock face. Ro- yeah, like bedrocky type stuff. Interesting. I didn't know that was the difference between the two. I think there's an elevation thing, but I think it's only like a few meters. Huh. Yeah. Well, jump off point or jump off uh, being used as the start of something came from military campaigns during World War One. Funny enough, uh, and everything after that. So that makes lots of sense. Yeah. Here's a quote: The fifth and eighth armies have launched, but not about paratroopers. No, 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 I wouldn't say it that way. So but topography was the right answer. By oh, the is way. it? Okay. Yeah, so I was thinking more like, uh, you know, like risk. Yes. Like the game of risk. Like you need to, you know, get your Australia sorted out. You have to have a central, like a, a jump off point. Yeah. Like so a, this is an actual quote. The fifth and eighth armies have launched the greatest drive in Mediterranean warfare in the jump off of Allied spring offensive. But it meant in the start of um, the Allied offensive. So that was. Uh, like we need was, Normandy to make this thing happen. Yep. Yep. And also loosely. Uh, was used to talk uh, about the vertical takeoff or the act of taking off for planes during the same war. But that still has the intent of being a beginning of something. Hmm. So being jumping off point, uh, obviously being used uh, figuratively. One example is in 1930s GB Shaw apple cart. Today the nation would be equally amazed if a man of his ability thought it was worth his while to prefer the wool sack even to the stool of an office boy as a jumping off place for his ambition. So it's now evolving to... Uh, so so here's an interesting thing. Originally, jump off. Then during World War I, jumping off, which I think was uh, just a correction of English because hmm. it's not a jump off point. It is a jumping off point. Hmm. But funny, if you go forward even further, like now you'll hear a lot of people go, uh, you know, I was in love with her from the jump. And mm-hmm. so to shorten it even more, but it comes from the same sort of little. I was interested in jumping her. <laughs> no, that's different. I see. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's a different one. <laughs> a jump off point um, seems very military. Yeah, yeah. When we say it, like jumping, which is why it's said here. A jumping off point into three Federation sectors. A little Star Trek Federation. There. Yeah. So, um, little little trivia for you, unless you're unless you need to go somewhere. No, no, no. How about the highest and longest jumping animals? You want to guess? Okay, that was the end of the origins, by the way. That's the that's the history the of the highest it. jumping. Animal. Let's go with the highest, highest marine mammal. Like jumping marine animals? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like on legs still. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm marine you, animals I'm have categories. Legs. Start with marine marine mammals. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go with a dolphin. Correct. Terrestrial. What? Terrestrial animal. Now we're talking legs. Oh. See, when you said terrestrial, I'm, I'm, I'm like... Alien? I was, I was extraterrestrial. I was b- back with the Federation there. <laughs> Jumping animal. I'm I gonna go oh, with... by the way, the dolphin, seven meters or 22.9 feet. That would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you're just out on your cruise ship. Animal, next... animal? I am going to say something really springy. High, not long. Yeah, I'm following you. High. I'm going to go with the tiger. Close. Cougar, actually. Oh, wow. Cougar can jump 19.6 feet up. That's enormous. So if I was up a tree and like 15 feet, I'm like, you can't get me, little jerk. <laughs> exactly. I guess I could kick it in the face. <laughs> Except cougars can also climb. Oh, yeah. Details. Okay. They got really specific here. Hoofed animal. A hooved animal that can jump. That sounds like one of them. Uh, Buffalo. Those, uh, <laughs> those things out in the Serengeti. Yeah. You're right. Am I? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know what they are. Wildebeest. Oh, not that. No. Okay. Impala. Impala. That. Yeah. Oh, deer. Of course, that yeah. makes way more sense than nine. But only nine. Than a wildebeest. Nine point eight feet. Uh, then there's some like specific ones, like the highest jumping horse, dog, rabbit, pig. Uh, how about the highest jumping? Like specific, like 
the dog named Cinderella jumped 67.9 inches. So I don't know what that's all about, but how about the highest jumping insect? A jumping insect. Who? What's something that... Uh, a June bug. A meadow frog hopper. Is, is it I'm, a frog or is it an insect? It's an insect. Is it? But it's called the frog hopper. Okay. Okay, how about... Uh, we'll do this really quick. The longest jump. The longest jump. That is... Now you can think of something springy. Okay. Tigger. A cheetah. Oh, no. I thought I thought you were thinking when you said springy before. It's the gray kangaroo. Oh, really? They can jump 44.2 feet. No. Yeah. I would never guess. I know they have like big legs and all the rest of it, but I don't think of it as a... I, th- I, thought, I thought it was like a defense mechanism. The next... For running. The next longest, furthest jump that an animal can do is done by a snake. No. Paradise flying snake can jump, leap, spring, whatever you want to call it, 32.8 feet. Shut up. <laughs> yep. That is terrifying. And I think we uh, give a little whoop whoop to the uh, impala for also being the longest jump. Highest and longest for the hoofed animals. And there you go. That's crazy. Yeah. If certain things were like jump only, I think of like what would... Um like a superhero that it would be like if you took away um like Spider-Man's web web flinging stuff. Right, he's a big jumper. Yeah, if he was all jumping. I but guess he'd Superman be... can leap over a tall building. But Spider-Man would be Peter Parkour if, <laughs> if he was a, just a jumper. Ah, you win. If he was a jumper. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but Superman would 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 win that one wow. for sure. See, I always thought that was dumb. Like Superman can fly, so is he leaping over a tall building? Is he jumping or flying? Look at how high I can jump. Kicks into the flying mode. You, you, that's not a jump. That's not legit. You kick, you kicked into flying mode there for one that's second. That's flying. It's falling with style. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, like how far can something jump? It's like, well, how big is the cliff or the bluff? <laughs> it's like. That you know, also, jump 300 feet once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Criss Cross will make you. Jump, jump, <laughs> jump. House of Pain. Van Halen. Van Halen. <laughs> Van Halen makes me want to jump. <laughs> Just go ahead and jump. Might as well jump. Might as well. <laughs> might, might as well. Uh, well... Well, well, so the origins then are, 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 it goes from topography. So a drop off was referred to as a jump off, got used figuratively in World War One as a beginning point, And then it got corrected from jump off to jumping off and has now been shortened to from the jump. And uh, all meaning jumping off point from the beginning. It's okay. a good place to start. It's a good place to in start. In the beginning is a very good place to well, start. Well, sounds pretty thoroughly covered. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the extent of it. Well, this uh, idiom, uh, we should probably uh, jump off, uh, jump off, jump to the end here. All right. Well, Riddling is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. Requires a two-part overlapping answer. Overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or words. So, for example, let me give you a good one. We left you with a fun one last week, which was episode 202. If it's not one thing, it's another. This famous neighborhood in L.A. is a game of two bad choices. Did you get that one? No, I didn't. <laughs> this neighborhood in L.A. is a game of two bad choices. The only thing, like, I was, the, when you kept saying L.A., all I go is Compton, and it's not in L.A. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like it's San famous. Francisco or something. Famous. If you are famous, you live in this famous neighborhood. Like the hills? Hollywood Hills? Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. Hollywood. A game of two bad choices that we played in last week's episode. Would you like to make a game out of this? Hollywood you would you know? Hollywood you rather. (laughs) Hollywood you rather. (laughs) Hollywood you rather. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. So that's how you play. Hollywood, would you rather? The correct answer is Hollywood you rather. Why, why was that so really, hard for me? I don't know. It was fun to watch. Oh, because of my brain. Holly, would you play a game? Do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? <laughs> a little bit. So I've got a couple. A Let's of switch it up. I've got two. One. You've got two. We usually one hanging. I'll go first. We can leave one of yours hanging. Oh, sure. 
I'm tired of le- leaving stuff hanging. Okay, let's let's do it because <laughs> my brain's working really well today. <laughs> clearly, clearly, this is a good jumping off point. We'll change. We'll switch things up. Okay. Uh, see if you like this one. This is a good place to leap from for what's on top of a witch. Wow. <laughs> this is a good place to leap from for what's on top of <laughs> what's on top of a witch. Uh, I'm gonna go with jumping off pointy hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just scraping the old barrel there. Pointy hat. Okay. Is, there's not a, is there a name for that type of hat? I don't I've know. only ever referred to it as a pointy hat. It's a witch's pointy hat. <laughs> okay. David Lee Roth says to do this in the chorus of their number one, their only number one song on is that Billboard. True? I had to squeeze it in. No. That's what I found. They have others that Panama? were in the li- I know that's exactly, but apparently, in terms of number one on Billboard, wow. on Billboard 100, that is mind blowing. A crazy, right? Yes. What about David Lee Roth on his own? Just a gigolo. Exactly. So they had twenty. So that's another episode. Okay. There's like twenty three songs that we'll made it into the whatever. Next episode to Van Halen. Uh, well, when I was like, that can't be right, and so I looked more. And it's like on Billboard that's 100. That's insane. David Lee Roth says to do this in the chorus of their only number one song on Billboard 100 because it was a place, because it was a place to launch. Jumping off point. Jump jumping off point. David Lee Roth says to do this in the chorus. Might as well, might as well jumping off point. (laughs) Okay. I'm like, the song's called Jump. I think it's just Jump. (laughs) It is just Jump. Oh, I know, funny. I was shocked to hear it as well. Because they have so many fun songs. So you wanted Just a Might As Well. Yeah, Might As Well okay, Jump. Yeah, Go ahead well. and jump. Go any ahead. any, oh, any of one of those, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, okay, let me give you another one. That's a leap of a start for this oily medicine. That's a leap of a start for this oily medicine. I'm going to go with jumping off pointment. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a bomb. A salve. A salve. Okay. Uh, well, you're probably going to need to know how to get a hold of us. So, Oh, well, I would love to switch you roles for this part, too, but I don't know. I don't, I've never paid attention to You can reach out to us on least. Instagram at the.village.idiom or email us thevillageidiompodcast at gmail.com or whether it's uh, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, or the Twitters at 3 Minutes Gone. I should probably position, like, computer and sound effects more in the middle because I was just looking at the camera and I bet I'm like this a lot. I was like, people just think like, why is he ignoring like, it? For totally the, ignoring skinny. The bulk of the listening is in podcast form, so they yeah. don't care where you look. <laughs> this is a podcast. They don't care even if you have eyes. Like, it Fair doesn't enough. matter. Fair enough. Okay. So why did I change my shirt for this then? Final one. Here we go. We'll leave from this spot. We'll leave from this spot shooting zero feet from you. Wow. Say it again. We'll leave from this spot shooting zero feet from you. We'll leave from this spot shooting, shooting zero, zero feet, feet from, from you. And that is three minutes gone. Oh, I forgot we were leaving. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> oh, good thing you didn't. Yeah. And you that, know what's, that's still three minutes gone. You know what's funny is I wrote down three. I, I, I have one more. Do you want it just for fun? Well, I'll answer it. Yeah, just answer it. Okay. Okay. These two women had a great jumping off point at the end of this movie when she was moving on up with George. It's the Jeffersons. These two women had a great jumping off point at the end of this movie when she was moving up with George. Thelma and Louise Jefferson? Yeah, that's it. Wow. Nice. Wow. That George was, and Wheezy. Yep. Wheezy. That's fantastic. Well, it was fun putting today's episode together. Oh, uh, more than fun, I think. Well, <laughs> hope you enjoyed it as much as Mark did. And uh, <laughs> that'll be the end of it. Uh, all right. So I'm Skinny. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. <laughs> <laughs> That's three minutes gone.